हेलो स्टूडेंट्स इन टूडे लेक्चर वी विल सी सम मोर सम्स ऑन एपी नाउ व्हाट इज द फर्स्ट सम व्हिच टर्म ऑफ फॉलोइंग एपी इज 560 सो एपी इज गिवन टू अस गिवन एपी इज 2 11 20 29 so on and somewhere in this ap we are going to get 560 so what we have to find out we have to find out which term is 560 so what i can say here a is equal to 2 first term is always considered as a d Subtract any two constants. Eleven minus two, nine. Twenty minus eleven, nine. So our d is nine. I got the value of a. I got the value of b. Now in this case, term is given to us, so we will consider as t of n. So t of n is equal to five sixty. So in this sum, what we have to find? We have to find out the value of n. We know. P of n is equal to a plus n minus one into b. Therefore, substitute the values. Five sixty is equal to two plus. I don't know the value of n. Value of b is nine. Therefore, five sixty is equal to two plus. Multiply nine nine into n nine n minus nine into one. Nine. Therefore, transfer all the numbers to left hand side. Five sixty as it is. Plus two will become minus two. Minus nine will become plus nine. Is equal to nine n. Therefore, five sixty minus two. Five fifty eight. Five fifty eight plus nine. Five sixty seven is equal to nine n. Therefore, I can say n is equal to. 567 upon 9 that is equal to 96 are 54 2 27 63 therefore n is equal to 63 i got the value of n as 63 so what i can say therefore 63rd term of given ap will be 5 So again, we will see the sum. So in this sum, what was the question? Which term of the following AP is 560? AP was given to us. What is the AP? 2, 11, 20, 29, and so on. In this AP, we are going to get a number 560. So we have to find out when will that number 560 come. So what I did? A, I took it as 2. Why? First number is always considered as A. What is the common difference? Twenty minus eleven, nine. Five sixteen. I took it as t of n. I applied the formula of t of n is equal to a plus n minus one into d. I know the value of t of n. I know the value of a. I know the value of d. I simplified it. I got the value of n. Your value of n will be always a natural number. So in this case, what is the value? Sixty three. So what I can say? First, second, third, fourth, fifth. So on, my sixty-third term will be five sixty. Now, let's see question number two. Check whether three zero one is in the sequence. Now, this sum is little bit same as the first question. Only the in the first question, A B was given to us. And we had to find out which term will be 560. It means we knew that in that AP 560 is there. In second question, what we have to do? We have to check. So first, what we will do? We will check whether the sequence is an AP. So given sequence is 5, 11, 17. 23 so on therefore p of 1 5 p of 2 11 p of 3 17 p 
T of 4, 23. Therefore, T2 minus T1, 11 minus 5 is equal to 6. T3 minus T2, 17 minus 11 is equal to 6. T4 minus T3, 23 minus 17 is equal to 6. We got the difference same, so I can say that the given sequence is an AP. Therefore, given sequence is an AP. Specify the reason why? Because difference. Difference between any two consecutive terms is same. Now, what we need first, we check whether the given sequence is an AP. Yes, it is an AP. Now we will see whether three zero one is in the sequence or in the AP. Now, first term we will consider A. What is A? D. Common difference. What is D? 6. We have to check whether it is AB. We are having 3, 0, 1. So, T of N is equal to 301. We know T of N is equal to A plus N minus 1 into D. Therefore, 3, 0, 1 is equal to 5 plus N minus 1 into 6. 3, 0, 1 is equal to 5 plus 6N minus 6. Therefore, 3, 0, 1 minus 5 plus 6 is equal to 6N. 301 minus 5, 296. 296 plus 6, 302 is equal to 6n. Therefore, n is equal to 302 upon 661 the 6, 5 are. 302 is not completely divisible by 6. So, what I can say? Therefore, 301 does not lie in the given sequence as we can say that as n is not a not a natural number so again we will see the sum in this sum a sequence was given to us and we had to check whether 301 lies in that sequence. Now, first what I did, first we checked whether the given sequence is an AP. Why? Because if and only if we know that the given sequence is an AP, we can apply the formula T of n is equal to A plus n minus 1 into T. Now, in previous examples, we saw how to check whether the given sequence is an AP. So, in first part, I got that the given sequence is an AP. In second part, what I have to check? I have to check whether 301 lies in the given AP. So, what I did? I took the value of A is equal to 5, D is equal to 6 and I considered n term as 301. Now, I have to find out the value of n. What I know? Value of n should be a natural number. I substituted the values, I simplified it, I got the value of n is equal to 302 upon 6. That is, I got in fraction. Now, since value of n is not a natural number, I can say that 301 does not lie in the given sequence. Now, let's see the third example. What is the question? How many two digit numbers are divisible by 4? So in this sum, AP is not given to us. So first let's form the AP. So what I can say? Given AP is. Now, which is the first two digit number divisible by 4? It is 12. 
एट इज ऑल्सो डिविजिबल बाय फोर बट एट इज अ सिंगल डिजिट नंबर वॉट इज अवर क्वेश्चन वी वॉन्ट टू डिजिट नंबर सो द फर्स्ट नंबर टू डिजिट नंबर डिविजिबल बाय फोर इज ट्वेल्व नेक्स्ट विल बी सिक्सटीन ट्वेंटी एंड सो ऑन Now, which is the last two digit number we know? Ninety-nine. Ninety-nine is divisible by four. No. Ninety-eight is divisible by four. Four. No. Ninety-seven. No. Ninety-six. Yes. So, what is our AP? Twelve, sixteen, twenty, so on, up to ninety-six. Now we have to find out how many numbers are how how many terms are there in this AP. So, here. What is a twelve? B difference sixteen minus twelve four. P of n is equal to ninety six. Now we will find out the value of n. So we know p of n is equal to a plus n minus one into d. Therefore. 96 is equal to 12 plus n minus 1 into 4. Therefore, 96 is equal to 12 plus 4n minus 4. Therefore, 96 minus 12 plus 4 is equal to 4n. Therefore, 96 minus 12, 88. 88 plus 12, 100. So, what is your answer? 84. 84 plus 4, 88 is equal to 4n. 96 minus 12, 84 plus 4, 88. Therefore, n is equal to 88 upon 4. Therefore, n is equal to 22. So, what I did? I found out the value of n. So, I can say that 96 is the 22nd term. So, how many numbers are there total? 22. So therefore, twenty-two two-digit numbers are divisible by four. Let's see the question again. So, what was asked to us? How many two-digit numbers are divisible by four? Which is the first two-digit number divisible by four? Twelve. Why we are not considering eight? Because eight is a one-digit number. We want two-digit number. So the first two-digit number is twelve. Next sixteen, twenty, so on. Which is the last two-digit number we know divisible by four? Ninety-six. So what I did? I took the value of a as twelve, b as four, and I considered ninety-six as nth term. So t of n is equal to ninety-six. By doing so, we will be able to find out the value of n. We got the value of n is equal to twenty-two. Means what? Twelve is the first term, sixteen second term, twenty third term, so on. Ninety-six is the twenty-second term. So I can say that total how many numbers are divisible by four? Twenty-two two-digit numbers are divisible by four. Now let's see one different type of example. In this example, what is given to us? The tenth term and eighteenth term of an AP are twenty-five and forty-one respectively. Then find thirty-eighth term of that AP. Similarly, if n term is ninety-nine, find the value of n. So. If you observe this sum properly, in this sum AP is not given to us, right? Instead of AP, two terms in that AP are given to us. Which two terms? Tenth term and eighteenth term. So to begin with, we will consider let A be the first term and B B the common difference of given A. Full stop. 
Now what is given to us? Given ten term. So p of ten is equal to twenty five. Eighteen term. So p of eighteen is equal to forty one. So two terms are given to us. Ten term that is p of ten equal to twenty five. Eighteen term p of eighteen is equal to forty one. Now we know the formula for n term. What is the formula? Now p of n is equal to a plus n minus one into b. Therefore, what I can say, what will be my p of ten? I don't know the value of a as it is now. P of ten. So my n is equal to ten. Ten minus one. D as it is. Therefore, what is P of ten? Twenty five is equal to a plus nine d. Equation number one. So what I did? I consider the formula for P of n. What is the formula? P of n is equal to a plus n minus one into d. Therefore, what will be my P of n? A plus n minus one into d. That is 25 is equal to a plus 9d. Similarly, what I can say? Similarly. Now, which term is given to us? 18. So p of 18 is equal to a plus 18 minus 1d. Therefore, 41 is equal to a plus 17d. Equation number two. Now I got two equations in A and D. What the first equation? A plus 9D is equal to 25. Second equation? A plus 17D is equal to 41. Now we will solve these both the equations by solving. We will get the value of A and we will get the value of D. So if you observe in first equation we are having A, in second equation also we are having A. So let us apply both the equations. So what will the state? Subtracting equation two from equation one. What is equation one? Twenty-five is equal to a plus ninety. Equation two forty-one is equal to a plus seventy. Since we are subtracting, let's change the sign. Minus, minus, minus. Twenty-five minus forty-one. Minus sixteen. A, A will get cancelled. Nine minus seventeen. Minus eight. Therefore, D is equal to minus sixteen upon minus eight. That is equal to two. Therefore, my D is equal to two. Now, I got the value of D. Consider any one equation one or two. Consider. Equation one. Now, what is my equation one? Therefore, twenty-five is equal to a plus nine d. Therefore, twenty-five is equal to a plus nine into two. Therefore, twenty-five is equal to a plus eighteen. Therefore, twenty-five by transpose will have cancelled. We get minus twenty-five minus eighteen is equal to a. Therefore. A is equal to 25 minus 18. That is 7. Now I got the value of A. I got the value of D. What they have asked us? They have asked us to find out the 38th term. Now, what will be 38th term? P of 38. What is the formula? A plus n minus 1. 38 minus 1 into D. Therefore. P of 38 is equal to what is my a 7 plus 38 minus 1 37. What is my d 2? That is equal to 7 plus 74. Therefore, P of 38 is equal to 81. Therefore, what I can say? Therefore, 38 term of given a p is Eighty-one. So half of the sum is finished. What we have done till now, 
two terms were given to us p of 10 that is 10th term and p of 18 that is 18th term we applied the formula of t of n after applying the formula we got two equations 25 is equal to a plus 9d 41 is equal to a plus 17d now already we have seen in linear equations in two variables how to solve the two equations i separated equation 1 and 2 i got the value of d considering any one equation substituting the value of d i will get the value of a now i got the value of a i got the value of d what was my question i had to find out the 38 term so again we will apply the formula of t of n is equal to a plus n minus 1 d in this case what is my n 38 so a 7 plus 38 minus 1 37 value of d is 2 After solving, I got the answer 81. That is my 38th term is 81. Now again, in further part, they have given us the n term, and we have to find out the value of n. Now, p of n is equal to 99. Now, what the formula for p of n? A plus n minus 1 into d. Is equal to 99. Therefore, what is my a? 7. I don't know the value of n. What is my d? 2. Is equal to 99. Simplify. 7 plus 2n minus 2 is equal to 99. Therefore, 7 minus 2, 5 plus 2n is equal to 99. Therefore, 2n is equal to 99 minus 5. Therefore, 2n is equal to 94. Therefore, n is equal to 94 upon 2. That is, n is equal to 47. So, in the second part, what was the question? N term was given to us, and we had to find out the value of n. Again, we applied the same formula. P of n is equal to a plus n minus 1 into d. But what is the value of n term? If n term is 99. So p of n is equal to 99. Substituting the values of a and d, solve it, you will get the value of n.